Morning, Leela Viss here. We've all been dealt a blow, one that's got us all in a box tied up with a COVID-19 bow. We've all been adjusting and transitioning to this new normal. Our family was dealt a blow back in thanks at Thanksgiving 2019, and since then, we've adjusted to a new normal. I've realized that I need a mantra, a reminder, a hashtag to get me through this reality. I've chosen the words, take courage. So as we move forward and teach in this new boxed in reality, sponsored by coronavirus, I propose that we take up a new mantra as well. And I've got three. Reinvent with restrictions, learn within limitations, and bloom with boundaries. Most of you are considering or are already reinventing your teaching to online lessons. There's plenty of people sharing their expertise on this topic, so today I won't be going there. What I do want to focus on is learning with the, within limitations. So here we go. The Grand Staff is a map that provides location and direction of pitches. And the problem for piano students is, is there's only seven pitches and then 88 piano keys. So this grand staff is going to feel more like a maze to them rather than a map. And that's why I like to give landmark notes specific names. Uh, let me explain here. Now, the Denver area has King Super's grocery stores in every neighborhood, on every corner just about. And so when we're referring to one location, we clarify this by saying, oh, it's the King Supers on Arapahoe and Holly, or no, it's the, the King Supers on Dry Creek and University, or the one on Ho Holly and County Line. So back to the grand staff, I clarify the location of C's by giving them special names. I've got Deep Blue C, Cow C, Middle C, Faith C, and Cloud C. I also have names for particular Fs and Gs. I've got Basement F and Bass Clef F, and then Treble G and Outer Space G. Next, students correlate the location on the keyboard to the location on the staff. So giving specific landmark names and limiting drills to these landmarks can help you communi communicate clearly to your students, especially during these online lessons. So here's how you can use this grand staff map in your lessons. First of all, I've got something printed like this, and this is free on my blog right now. I'll put a link um, in the comments so that you can find this yourself. And I would print one off for yourself. I've got mine laminated, and you can print them off for your students, as many as you need to. And then what you want to do is just um, memorize these as fast as possible. Memorize the names and locations. So Deep Blue C, Basement F, and you can always just choose a few to begin with at first. So thanks for joining me and I'm glad that you're here and I'm going to keep going and then I'll take any questions that you may have. So now once you get to know these you can have some fun online or at your lessons drilling these. So here's some ideas. First of all you could say okay I'm playing a C. Can you match my C? And if they happen to have a little friend at home, or if you want to give them a little eraser, you could always say, okay, place the cow on the correct C. Can you match my C? And hopefully they would find the correct C eventually. They might have to poke around a little bit but using their ears. Oh, that is deep blue C. And if they're not sure, then they could figure out, oh yes, that's, that's the C way down here, way below the middle C. So that's one way to drill this information with them. And then another way is to um, switch it and let them drill you. So they play a C or an F, and you have to figure out which one that they've played. And of course, you can guess incorrectly at first so that you can test their ears and make sure that their ears are get, starting to hear and match pitch. Uh, so here's another way. You could hold up a flashcard and say, okay, here's a G. Can you find that G on the piano? And hopefully they would find outer space G. Now, here's what's interesting, too, is I will say, 
yes, that is outer space G. And how did you know it was outer space G? I want to hear their logic behind their answers. And hopefully they would say something like, well, I know it can't be treble G because that's really close to middle C. And this one is higher up and away, further away from middle C. So letting them express the logic and the reasoning behind it, then you know they're starting to understand this map. So uh, here's another way. Um, if they're playing a piece, I'll often say to my students, oh, that one starts on an F. Can you tell me what F that is? And um, then they will have to figure it out again and, and associate their map to that piece. And that even though I'm giving them the answer, I'm saying it's an F, I'm not telling them which F. And that's helping them, again, understand the relationship of this to this, which really, in all honesty, should be more like this, right? Because this is a horizontal zone and this is vertical. So that, that's what makes this so hard for them to understand. And now one other thing that I like to do is, um, let's see, hold up a flash card that is not part of um, one of their landmarks something like this, and then have them uh, name the landmark that is closest to that. And hopefully they would say, Cow C. And then, how far is that from Cow C? Oh, that's one step down, and that's a B. So again, relating everything to those landmarks. And then one other thing that's kind of fun to do is, um, I've got these Hal Leonard flashcards. They're just plain staff. And remember, you can use both sides and you can use them as a dry erase board as well. So I've made this one and I would show this to them. It's probably more my advanced students or you know ones that are getting fairly familiar with the grand staff and say, is this one of your landmarks? Now, some may say, oh yes, that is. And they say, nope, it's not. And then I would want them to figure out why it's not. Now this looks like deep blue C. It's not deep blue C. Why is it not deep blue C? Oh, because it's actually treble clef. And that's an A right below middle C. Because that's, again, testing their knowledge of this map. And you know that a lot of people can struggle with location, direction, maybe mixing up this, the clefts. There's a lot of things that can be confusing about that. So these are all different ways that you can test um, their knowledge of this map. Now, to reinforce this um, idea, I use a lot of apps in my teaching, and I usually have an off bench time with my students. Now, if I go online permanently for a while with my students, this off bench portion of the lesson has to be reinvented. And I'm thinking through that right now, and stay tuned, I'll be talking more about that. But I, one of the things that you can do, if you have these apps on your iPad, you can always just flash them right on the screen. You don't have to do anything fancy like that. But um, one of the apps that I really like, because it really reinforces those landmarks, is an app called NoteQuest. And what I like about this one is there's different levels, but one of the levels is a landmark and then an interval um, from that landmark. And that's really when reading takes off. Reading is not about pitch recognition. Reading is about seeing the relationship between pitches. So I'm not just suggesting that we just focus just on pitch recognition, but we have to get to know this grand staff first before we can really start figuring our way around it. So the other apps that I really like uh, for note recognition, Flash Note Derby is my all-time favorite because I can isolate it down to at least two pitches. But I know a lot of pe a lot of people are fans of Note Rush as well. So any of those apps could work uh, during a lesson, but also you could encourage parents to purchase those apps if they're um, interested in doing so, or at least when everybody's back on the bench, back with you, and you have an off bench time, you can use those apps to reinforce a lot of this grand staff reading. Now, one of the other things that I've been doing with my students, um, and that's included with this package that I'm giving this along to, I'm also giving just a plain one that you could always write on if you'd um, like to do that. I also kind of have these crazy looking illustrations. I don't know how helpful those are, but it kind of gives you know, some information on why I chose the names that I did. Um, middle C's in the middle. Okay, I gotta go backwards. And pretty soon I'll just have them recognize that, oh yeah, the spaces do spell that name face. I'm not into mnemonics. I, I promise I'm not doing that, but that's why I always call this one face C. 
Um, and then there's outer space G and cloud C, and I also have some for the base clef. So uh, this is part of that um, as well. And then there's one other thing that I included with this idea of drilling pitches, and that is, okay, I gotta find it here. I have all of these sheets, and I think I have nine of them right now. And what I'm doing is I'm including landmark notes. Now the very first sheet I think is just middle C and G, but each sheet adds a few more landmarks. Now this one includes all the landmarks in the treble clef. And then you'll notice that I've got all the pitch names at first. I'm giving it all away, but they still have to decide which C it is and where it is on the piano. And then as we move further down, you can see that there's fewer pitch names and then pretty soon there's none at all. Ooh, I even play two together. And then there's an opportunity for students to write their own drill. Now, this is how I use it. First of all, I would have them look at the first line and I would just have them play it. And they could take as long as they want to C, C, G, G, just finding the correct ones. And that can take a while because they're not always sure which C it is. Now, once they feel pretty good, then I would probably tap my toe and we'd count along and keep four beats in each measure. C, C, but as slow as they need to, but aiming to get the correct rhythm. And then, when they're feeling really confident, then we turn on a rhythm, and it could be C, C. Now, this may be a little hard to do online because I don't know, there may be a little lag in the timing, but if they've got a keyboard of their own with some rhythms, you could do that. Or if they have the app Super Metronome Groove Box that has some fun grooves, they could do that. And um, then as they move forward, you could always up the tempo, challenge them, ooh, can you play it faster and faster? So all just different games to reinforce those locations. Again, this is not reality. This is not really reading. I realize that. But it is moving their eyes forward and helping them, them recognize those pitch names and those landmark notes. Um, and I don't care about fingering. Fingering is not important. I know it sounds a little bit upsetting, but don't worry. Fingering comes, but that's not the point of this. The point of this is finding the correct landmark in the correct time. That's the ultimate goal. And then, the, like I said, there's a little place down here where they can make their own drill. This has been very fascinating to me because they don't always realize that the G is on that second line. It shows me a lot of what they're really understanding when they read this map. Uh, it also shows me that maybe they're not so concerned about keeping four beats in a measure, all that kind of stuff. So they'll pile in a whole bunch of notes in that first measure. So it's been very interesting. Lots of teaching moments going on um, when there's this opportunity for them to add their own drill in at the end. So now back to what I was talking about before. Um, this is all about teaching with limitations and I want to make sure that you feel confident with um, where you're going with these restrictions that we are now all experiencing. And so I hope that this can help you figure out some ways for you to communicate so that when they're on the wrong C, you can say, hey, wait a minute. Which C are you supposed to be on? Are you supposed to be on cow C or are you supposed to be on deep blue C? And that gives you a way to communicate. And it also is testing their ears and your ears. You really are using your ears more and more with online teaching more than any other opportunity. Now, I just want to make sure that I don't forget anything here. So um, I just uh, let me just tell you a couple of things that are going on. Um, I want to continue some of these things because um, I, like I said, I need mantras to keep me going. I need something to get me out of bed in the morning. And I think maybe you know exactly how that feels. We all are kind of lost. Uh, we may not have much of a routine or our routine has changed so much it's um, blindsiding us. So I, I want to continue to help you find ways to set limits and to also bloom within boundaries. And that's when I'm going to be talking about a new resource that I'm coming out called Cookie Cutter Composing. I'm test driving this a little bit with my students. It is directly related to the 321 challenge. And I also have a Get Inspired episode that I'm connecting with this that I'm updating just a little bit. So stay tuned for that. 
Um, I'm also going to give some ideas for on or at home activities that you can do with your students or that your students can do at home off the bench that get them learning about different time periods and composers with these little one page reports. And this is just the start of a one page report where they're listening to a podcast and I let them doodle. Do you know that you listen better when you doodle? So stay tuned for those. I'll be talking about those. And um, if you have any questions, uh, where is this map? I heard someone say that. Okay, yes, I will um, add a link to the map in just a minute. Hey, Brittany, thanks for joining me. Brittany is my daughter-in-law, and believe it or not, she is teaching preschool via Zoom. So I don't know how she does it, but she's doing it. And I guess we are all doing it together, right? So um, I want to just say, carry on, hang in there. I'm trying to do my best, and I appreciate all the support that I've gotten from all of you. It's been fantastic. Um, I wasn't expecting that. Um, all the best to you as you teach in this COVID-19 reality. And I look forward to hearing comments from you. So sorry. Um, take care and take courage. Bye.